because it uh, sorry has, Julie. that's okay it has some some different possible roots and so it's it's a very individual condition in some ways but certainly what greg and i have worked on seems to have um, a lot of merit and application for different manifestations of this and you know i'm just here to tell all of you i don't know obviously what your individual situation is but i truly believe that um, this condition can be overcome completely um, i think there are some elements that play into that but i just want you all to know that i have a lot of hope i'm getting close to the end and i want to share that um, about hope and encouragement with all of you that's what we're here to do we're not trying to change uh what's what's out there we're trying to add to the knowledge that's all we can ever do and we've got an approach based on for me a very logical process the number one rule that we come up with pictures are good you've got a key Firstly, what are we trying to achieve? Secondly, how does the system work? Thirdly, am I physically able to do it? And what processes are we going to take to achieve our, our goal? What are we trying to achieve? What does it look like, sound like, feel like? How does the system work? In our case, the neurology stuff, <laughs> not the instrument, not the connection between the instrument and the golf club or the instrument and the body, whatever the case may be. How does the learning process work? And then what steps are we going to take to get there? And is my body capable of doing it? To which I say, in our case, Jules, the body's not broken. It's working perfectly. The muscles are very obedient. They're doing exactly what they've been instructed to do right this is very very important gotta believe well not believe it's fact if anyone has an involuntary tremor anywhere in the body that's there 24 7 and they cannot switch it off that's above our pay grade I cannot i cannot work with that i would never even try i do have someone i he may be happy to um, put his hand up, but he doesn't have to. I was told once that I've been diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's disease. And I'm like, okay, fine. That's out of my pay grade, but let's do some tests. And we did a couple of things like drop the shoulders down, turn the body off, go to the first element of stillness, which we'll talk about, then slowly engage the body, and as arms moved, was there any tremors? No. And this person had never heard of Irk. And turns out, fully blown musician's vocal dystonia, to which he said, I'm so excited and happy because I don't have early onset Parkinson's disease. First person I've had being excited about not having, you know, first person excited having dystonia so the process is and jules jump in at any time because i you know me i'll just get my brain will go down the path of righto let's let's fix this damn thing and greg you're forgetting this you're forgetting this radio so have we set the boundaries the way that you would like is there anything you'd like to add before we start getting into some processes and definitely opening up for anyone who's prepared to um add their experiences, their conditions, things that, that, that they're working on. We can use that as a means to go through the processes. We can talk about our processes with, with Jules. So the one thing that I wanted to add, maybe it's more than one thing, is that this condition is experienced um, 
you know, differently by us because we're individuals and, and different um, muscles are involved, but it, it's, it's still, even though the muscles involved and you feel that it's a brain nervous system issue and it's the communication with the muscle that's faulty um, for various reasons. And so in my case, going about solving this has, I've followed a, um, a very integrated approach and working with Greg, we've addressed emotional issues as well as mindset issues, as well as playing psychology issues, as well as actually um, working on the muscle communication itself. So sometimes it, and I don't know for everybody, but for me, it's taken a very comprehensive approach to acknowledge, you know, the emotional piece, the, the playing psychology piece, um, even things like just um, self-care, you know, um, basic self-care is also important in this. So um, I've taken and, and we've taken a very, you know, wide perspective of um, approaching this and, and working on it and solving the various pieces of it. And again, I, I suspect that that may be really important for a lot of people to 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 take a you know a wide view of it but again this is such an individual condition as we all know and i'm actually affected in a different area than a lot of people are i've been affected in my upper um, left body and you know, i hold the trumpet and so your your muscles are engaged holding the trumpet so i have an unusual manifestation but i have met four other musicians that are affected in the same uh, area that I am. So it's the left trapezius muscle, shoulder, and, and at one time it was part of the neck. It's pretty much out of there now, and, and a lot of this has calmed dramatically down. And then the other thing is that um, kind of in line with that is that I um, attended uh, Dr. Joaquin Farias's online seminar, and for those of you that don't know him, he's a um, Gastonia expert in Canada. And one of the points that he made is that, you know, this is um, for focal dystonia, it's called focal, but it's really not. So that kind of plays back to the idea that sometimes we have to take a wider view of what's going on because our nervous system is saying that, you know, our instrument is threatening and it's responding and it's jumbling up a lot of information that we would normally um, have about body mapping and, and other components that we don't even think about drawing on um, when we play our instrument. So I just wanted to throw that out, that that's been one of our tenants really from the beginning is to take the, the wider view and, and look at all the pieces. Yeah, that we can leave no stone unturned because we all got to this place right now today for different reasons in different journeys, different playing experiences, different maybe trauma experiences, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, we're all here. So why? No, not why. <laughs> the why is important maybe for some, but more importantly, the, and it comes down to the first element that I'd like to, to, to share with you. It's gotta be a way that I can have a picture showing the whole time, I'm not sure. So stillness. The first element of our cycle of T's, technical everyday element. Even though technical, maybe emotional, <laughs> but it's all connected. Stillness, 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 stillness. So stillness involves, can we sit there with the eyes closed and the body completely disengaged? The mind calm and stillness. Imagine a lake, no ripples. Are there a myriad of negative messages being thrown at you? Anxiety. I don't want to practice. I can't practice. You're not going to get over this. You're never going to get better. Give up playing. All this sort of stuff. So involved in that is a degree of acceptance of the fact that this has happened. Can't be in denial. And I find occasionally with some people, there is a degree of, she'll be right, 
I'll deal with it. I'll play through it. Maybe for some people that works. But at the end of the day, my logic is if you keep doing something, you're going to get the same result. Or if it's going in a particular direction, it's going to get worse. And so we want to nip this in the bud. So if I see any signs of hesitation with any player or any trauma in regards to things that might have happened at a rehearsal or doubt about their own ability to do something, all of these are little warning signs to go, radio. I, I would never just say to someone who's a bit uh, trepidatious, trepidatious about practicing that they're heading down the custodia path. I would never say that. However, there are warning signs. And so we go, righto, this, this has happened. And if and don't think I'm being dismissive or unloving uh, about this, but at the end of the day, we're here. We need to move on from it. So have we accepted it? Have we accepted where we're at? Because once we do, we go, okay, great. I want to move on. Think of the key, the three elements. What are we trying to achieve? Um, Holly to everyone. So you're a, a flautist, Holly. And we want to move on. We want to get to a point where we're not having any uh, dystonic reactions. So what does that look like? Can we close our eyes and in complete stillness visualize what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like to even just hold the instrument? Let's break it down into little bits. Let's not think up playing the Bloomin' World's Most Difficult Flute Concerto. Let's think about playing, you know, a, a middle G on flute with a steady body's concert hall tone. And let me tell you, my friend, I've given a couple of lessons to a couple of flute players, and I've got a concept called the body's concert hall. And if you oh, open up the chest and really open that up, I've heard flute sounds change so dramatically. Now you probably so far beyond this and a high performing player, I don't know. But let me just say that the whole concept of the body's concert hall is really hip for flute. Um, so can you sit there? What we want to do is build dopamine on every little element of what we're working on, we want to get excited about it. Because if I saw a show of hands and I if I had to ask who feels anxiety going into the practice room I'd suspect that there's a few here right John the mere thought of going into the room itself is challenging right so this is no psychological foundation to try and go and play on it's instantly negative and it's only going to take the smallest problem in the practice session to send you down the dark path right we need to develop an excitement and a love for what we're doing and build on that i've got a concept called I've recently through my uh, trumpet website uh teamed up with a guy who does some amazing graphics <laughs> so We've got all these pictures, but they're really important. I've got a concept called the 16-8. On average, we're awake for 16 hours and we're asleep for eight hours. I think we can all agree that we're working on the brain stuff here. It's not a technical thing, pick up and play the instruments, not that. So we've got 16 hours during the waking hours of the day where we can work on overcoming this condition. And what element are we working on? It might just be stillness. For 16 hours a day, I can work on shooting down negative messages. Based on the second element of the key, how does the system work? Well, I know that my body is not broken. I know that my muscles are very obedient. We just need to learn something new. We're learning something new. We're going to put behind old habits psychologically. They're there. Of course they're there. They're wired in. We're not worried about that. We're going to build something new. We're going to build a – Jules and I often talk about the track. There's a railway track here and a railway track here, and she starts off on the wrong track, and we've got to take her across to a junction, and then at that junction she goes onto the right track. So at the moment 
we're trying to get so deep inside the playing that she starts off on the right track. And it happens sometimes, and then other times it comes in here because that's the way she's more solidly wide. That has to happen. So consider this, you get into the practice room. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't want any reactions. I don't want this. I don't want that. That's like me going, um, I want blonde hair. I want blonde hair. I'm going to go into the practice room. I want blonde hair. I've got black hair or whatever it is. There's one reality. We're wired a particular way, right? So we've got to understand that and expect that there are going to be reactions. But then what we do, one of my favorite teaching tools, <laughs> magnifying glass. What are the problems? Where are the problems? What's happening? Where's it happening? What does it feel like? So we've got our picture in our mind, which is called the portrait. A picture of what we want. What does the outcome look like, sound like, and feel like? First element of the key. What are we trying to achieve? And you've got that in your mind. It's a portrait. It's a picture on your mind's feature wall. You've got a big feature wall in your mind. You can look at it and go, I have got a picture of me sitting in stillness, calm. We're going to just out. Our challenge today for some people might be to just find stillness and not have any negative messages, starting to build dopamine on the fact that my body's not broken and I can relearn. And Jules will agree with her playing, and I'm sure it's common that you come back a better player. You're not trying to play the way you used to. That's just going to take us down the same path. You're going to be a better player because you've learned from your previous experiences, you divert around the dodgy bits and in, in, you know, build new habits, more efficiency. So can we sit there with the eyes closed and monitor the, the messaging? Because it's all about messaging. Put it, if, you, if people are taking notes, write down messaging because it's the messages from the subconscious brain that control ultimately what the muscles do. So we've got to change the messaging. To change them, we've got to know what they are. So sitting in stillness and looking at them, and I call it scud missiling the, the messages. As soon as there's a negative message, going, no, 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 you don't belong here anymore. That's not valid. That's old thinking. That's not who I am now because I know that my body works and the muscles are able to um, train them to do something new. And that's what we're doing. How exciting. I'm going to start a new habit. I'm going to start building from the ground up and I'm going to be a better player. Right? So stillness is a big one. Can you get your, your um, mind and body into complete stillness and you do a body scan look start with your toes wiggle your toes around shake your ankles around up to your knees hips you know because we know i'll get onto breathing shortly but the breathing can set off a lot of things so as the, is the breath calm body does this keeps us alive we don't even have to think about it positive negative pressure positive pressure negative pressure so constantly doing this. Thank you, reptilian brain. It's keeping us alive by just going. Does it automatically. So can we just switch the mind off, allow that to happen, let the body relax and monitor the messaging. If we can do that and start to actually think consciously. I can get through this. I'm going to, uh, uh, Jules will tell you I'm a shock up. I just keep repeating myself over and over. Got to reinforce it. The body's not broken. Just needs to change the messaging. Right? You can play. It's just a matter of how we tap into that. And we start from stillness. My whole education approach with trumpet and brass is let's not involve any involuntary or unnecessary muscle activation. Let's not use anything that we don't need to. And I cop crap for it because I'm going, you can play passively. You can take a breath, expand the body, then relax. And you can play a really big, loud sound on the trumpet passively. 
Now, a lot of high, you know, reputation teachers around saying, you have to hold your stomach, you have to blow air like you're about to be punched, you have to do this, you have to do that to play trumpet. I go, no, you don't. You don't have to engage your body to hum. Mm, thanks to the vocal cords, I'm converting the energy from our lovely breath into sound. Why? How? At the vocal cords. I'm not engaging, I'm passive. Okay? So if we start to understand this and go, right, we already breathe to stay alive, this is great. Then we need to expand our breath, obviously using the compression that the body creates from staying alive isn't really enough to uh, sustain a note on a wind instrument. So if our breath's doing this, all of a sudden we need to take a bigger breath laterally under the shoulders will the shoulders raise yes at the end of the breath lungs full drop okay now i'm sure there's a few of you here that the moment you think about breathing especially when you've got your instrument it can trigger reactions okay so we need to overcome that forget the instrument forget playing what's our goal here first element of the key what are we trying to achieve what does it look like? Can I see in my mind, up on the portrait feature wall, can I see myself energize the lungs? Second element of the cycle of teeth. Energize the lungs. Natural energy. Can we expand the body in through the nose? Because what we're doing is eliminating any muscular movement that could trigger any reaction so if we're breathing straight in through the nose out through the mouth we've energized the lungs we've taken a breath i just don't call it breathing because there's so many different breathing techniques in the trumpet world that it kind of gets confusing so i go well let's energize the lungs it's like a battery i often do this packets of balloons everywhere. The active part of what I just did blowing up the balloon was the push of the air from the lungs. That's the active bit, blow the balloon up. And playing the blowing up a balloon is harder than playing trumpet. I create more internal compression to blow this up than what I do playing lead trumpet in a big band, right? Once we've done that, there's the energy right there. So we can sit there and go, cool. I've energized the lungs. I've got a battery that's loaded here and drop. That sound, the energy coming out, you can hear it. You can see it. Passive energy. You can feel it. <clears throat> There's a particular person around who takes a demonstration of this and misrepresents it quite a lot. This is about a psychological awareness of seeing energy from a passive body. Uh-oh, internet connection unstable. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem. That would be disappointing. Passive. No body engagement. Everyone can do this. So we energize the lungs. Does anyone have a problem? Feel free to jump in on anything that we're talking about here and say so i have a problem with such and such or when i go to do this such and such it's not just i'm happy to as <laughs> as you'll find out i'm happy to sit here and talk for four hours about this stuff every day but it's not about me it's about helping you guys recognize that you can get through this and spotting the error problems and working on those so feel free to jump in at any stage when we expand the body, the body wants to be here. Here's your ribs. When you're at complete repose, so you breathe in, you drop. <sighs> Equilibrium. Everyone can do this. All right? Here's your rib cage. When we energize the lungs, full, full balloon. I'm holding it out here. There's no compression in the body because I haven't relaxed the body yet. It's only when I relax the body that it creates the energy. This here, the air is inside, is it atmospheric pressure? 
all that I'm doing is using the intercostal muscles and the oblique muscles here to hold the ribs out. Then I, I relax, the body reduces. Everyone can do that, right? If that takes any RAM, any conscious thought, that's what you need to spend 16 hours awake working on. Stillness, energize the lungs. If we can't do that without doubt, without confidence, without thinking, that's where we're at. Let's nail that. So there's no RAM requirement, no conscious brain uh, energy required to sit there with a calm mind and a belief that we can get through this and energize the lungs. You can do it. Everyone can do it. And if it creates a challenge, there's your first warning sign. There's the first error. Because all we're on about here is error detection, error correction. The body's got a bad habit developed due to whatever the reasons were that got us here. Trauma as a kid, pressure from the parents, doubt in one's own ability, bad experience, cranky conductor, bullying from a section, whatever the case may be. We're all here for a reason. So we've got to move past from that and go, right, what can I do? Remember right at the start, I said, what can I do? What can't I do? And in between there's what can I sometimes do? So what I can do is sit in stillness. What I can do is energize the lungs and then drop and let that energy move. So you can walk around 16 hours a day doing that building. I can do this, right? Third element. And I'll be doing this if I'm, Julie, Julie was talking the other day about darts players. They get the yips. Apparently just holding the hand there and they shake and there's these pages of darts players going, I don't know what's going on. I can't hold the dart still. I'd love to talk to those guys and gals. <laughs> it's like, right, what are we going to do? We're going to energize the lungs. Can we picture ourselves standing there with the, with the, the hand not moving? What does that feel like? What does it look like? What does it sound? It doesn't sound like much. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Can you picture yourself in your mind standing there holding your hand in position? We're not even holding a dart. Don't hold a dart, for goodness sake. That's just going to trigger a bunch of nonsense. Can you sit there and hold your hand in the position or can you imagine yourself holding the hand in the position? Hold your hand there. Then imagine holding a dart. What impact does that set off any spot fires in the body? You know, Jules and I talk about the radar. Actually, I should have had a picture of the radar ready for today and I didn't think of it. But, you know, the, the military radar with the green and the dots and the beep and the thing goes around. Beep. We're detecting errors. We're detecting anxiety. We're, in we're detecting doubt. We can't have confidence and doubt at the same time. So where's the doubt? Oh, well, as soon as I imagine holding a dart, I can't breathe. I start to get anxious. Well, let's fix that. I really hope my internet doesn't, it hasn't done this in months. So fingers crossed. Of course I can hold my hand there. As soon as you pick up the dart, things start to react. Okay, great. The minute that you think about picking up the dart, the hand starts to respond. Ah, awesome. That's what we want to find. That's what we're looking for. It's awful. Yeah, we know it's awful, but it's really important. I can inhale freely until the lip plate is on the chin. Then facial muscles tend to move. It's the same thing, Holly. So when when the when the dart guy, I can I can pick my hand up. I'm holding the dart, but as soon as I bring my hand up here, it starts. Okay. Doesn't do it when I'm not holding the dart. Pick up the dart. Put the dart down. Up the dart. We all know that. We all understand this. 
So the question is, how do we overcome that? To the best of my ability and what we've been working on and seeing amazing results is from stillness. Stillness is the point of reference for everything. Then energizing the lungs with zero activation of any unnecessary or involuntary muscles anywhere in the body. Once we've got stillness and we can energize the lungs, there's our point of reference. That's what we want. And at no stage shall that be compromised. Zero tolerance for anything firing up anywhere in the body, because look, it's not shaking now. There's no reaction now. So then when Jules and I started, I call it the force field. Like we used to use the finger. We got footage of this. I go, right, oh, can you, and Brad's here. He won't mind me saying this, that when we first started, when we detected the shake, it's like, okay, is the hand shaking when it's down by your side? No. Let's bend the elbows. No. Let's use the rotator cuff really slowly. Eyes closed. How are we there? Stop there. Are we okay? Yep. Good. Let's move a bit closer. We've got a force field. <laughs> There's a force field around your mouth there, Holly. Very protective. It's not going to let anything in. No threat can breach the force field, right? So we go, where is the force field? So with Jules, it's like eyes closed. And that would actually ramp up the issue because of the facial, the spatial awareness issues that, that happen. But that's okay. The amount of time that Jules was reticent to close the eyes, and I'm going, if you don't close your eyes, you're not going to see it. It just makes it so obvious where the problems are. Right? So with eyes open or eyes closed, Holly, I'd, I'd highly recommend doing both. You go, right, at what point? So we do uh, V for visualizer, not V for victory anymore. It's V for visualizer. We use a rim, mouthpiece rim on trumpet to, to practice these things. So it, I can hold it here. But as soon as it gets to a particular point and the brain goes, oh, hey, hey, wait, you're, you're trying to play here. Wait a minute, you go away. And you that's, there are two phases of practice. I'm just going to really jump to a big diversion here. There are two phases of practice. You've got the eradicative approach we're eradicating it took Jules 12 months to accept the fact that there was a word eradicative <laughs> Greg you can't say that word there's no such word look, look I'm going to google it oh eradicative the process of eradicating <laughs> little little win for Greg yay right so we've got the eradicative approach or we've got the rodeo approach which means we're going to hold the flute on our mouth and we're going to react and we're going to look at it. We're going to hate the feeling of it. We're going to be terrified by it, but we're going to do it for data collection because don't forget, we know we're wired like this. We know we're wired like it, so it's going to happen. We're not going to run away from it. We're not going to reject it. We're going to accept it, which is really, really hard to do. I say it lightly. You think it's not light. The amount of times where I, I, I say to Jules, it's a barking dog in your face. You've got to look at it. Put the horn on, hold it there. And she's going, I can't do it. It's a barking dog in your face. You've got to do it. You've got to look at it. And you've got to talk to it. And you've got to make sure to turn that barking dog into a little placid little puppy dog. Right? So what's the threat? Where's the threat coming from? So we've got eradicative, which is the force field. Oh, I'm here. So with Jules, it used to be... Get the fingers, fingers, fing and the head would go from about here. Right? Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Here. Okay. So I, I've got, we've got hours of me screaming, going, what's happening? Where is it happening? What does it feel like? What's going on? Uh, it was flooding also sounds similar to it is systemic desensitization absolutely it's exactly what it is right so we use stillness as the 
reference point. Calm mind, calm body. We've got the radar. Blip, blip, the green dots on the radar. All of a sudden, you get to a point, you get closer and closer, and all of a sudden, the eyebrows go up. The alarm turns on, the alert starts, anxiety builds, and I call it the shadow. At what stage do you sense the body hasn't reacted yet, but it's going to? I, you know, I can't see the boogeyman, but I can certainly see his shadow in the doorway, right? At what point does the shadow appear? Is it before you get to the practice room? Well, beat that, right? That's the anxiety. You've got to build confidence. You've got to build dopamine. You've got to build excitement. You've got to build belief. You can't have doubt and confidence and belief at the same time. You've got to get rid of doubt. My body's not broken. And whenever in that 16, eight, you start and sense the shadow. No, doesn't exist. We're not doing that anymore. Constant positive reaffirmation in the brain. Nope, not doing that. No, no, because that's if you see that and get caught up in those messaging, then you're you're just going to perpetuate it. It's going to live there. And so the, this whole thing is done consciously, and it's only something that I've realized recently about conscious reprogramming. Um, frustration zone versus playing the success instead of playing until failure. Right? <laughs> it's all about success. It's about the little wins. Absolutely. So you've got, you've got um, the, the learning loop is knowing what you're working on and then either creating an error or a success. And every action, Jules, is followed by a, a message. And I've got all these three word messages here. So just say on, on our um, uh, practice day, I'm walking around for 16 hours out, mowing the lawns, driving to work, on the phone, whatever. 16 hours to do positive reaffirmation drills, long time. And then eight hours of sleep for the brain to do the new neurological magic that it does thanks to the thoughts that we're giving it consciously so my my goal today in my practice routine is to sit here in complete stillness i'm going to shut my eyes and i'm just going to be calm let's see how i go for the next five seconds then you go how did i go here are the options and it's a list that's growing but we, we need, we've done an action, right? We've done an action. We've sat in stillness. After every action requires a message. Every, react, every action requires a message. So you've sat in stillness. If you sat successfully in stillness, there was nothing going on in the body and the mind was happy, almost excited to get started. Then we go, that was good. That was right. There it is. This must work. Play like this, just do that. Play like that. They're all the th positive three word things. Just do that. Just stay calm. Can I do 10 seconds of stillness? Can I do 20 seconds of stillness? It'll become habit. If at some stage in that five second stillness approach, you're not gonna make it, you can't play. That's not gonna happen, this is never gonna work. You gotta give up. Message. That's not it. Don't do that. That's wrong. That message is incorrect. We're not doing that anymore. Right? It's error detection. And the error is in the messaging. And something as simple as a negative thought can be put all the way through to the worst dystonia reaction you can experience. So we're reprogramming the messaging from scratch from the minute we get up in the morning. I can't wait to go back. We love playing. We spent all those hours as a kid or whenever developing our skills, learning the flute, learning the trumpet, learning the drums, learning the bass, learning golf, learning darts. We love it. But somewhere along the line, something's happened and we've lost the love and it's become a burden in some particular way, shape or form. Why? Because it did. <laughs> so we've got to rebuild, we've got to regrow. 
and come back and find the love for it again and go, right, stillness, well done. I just sat for a minute in stillness. And whilst I had a couple of negative messages come through, the minute I sensed them, the shadow, I went, no, 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 we're not doing that. No. Nope. Error is not having a negative message. Error is not fixing it. Error is not combating it. Negative message. No, no, not going there. My body's not broken. I can close my eyes. My body's completely functional. I can breathe. I've got lungs. I've got fingers. I've got lips. I'm not standing that messaging anymore because I'm rebuilding and I'm really excited about it. it. Starts here. Everything starts from here. Then we can take the breath. Drop. Now we go on to the next trigger point. Humming. Stillness. Energize the lungs. Humming. Now, I would do this same exercise with the biggest, scariest, purple-haired darts player, 400 pounds, chugs beers like nothing else, but his hand's shaking when he goes to throw a dart. And I go, right, mate, no problem. So can you sit in stillness? Can you imagine what the outcome is that you're looking like? Can you spot the errors? <clears throat> Are you anxious? No, I'm good, mate. I don't. Can you take a breath in through your nose and just stay calm? Can you imagine holding a dart without shaking? Yep, I can do that. Radio. the next thing is, and this can be a big trigger point, it's going to start humming. You start humming passively because as soon as there's a sound element involved with musicians, probably more so than darts players, but I don't know. I haven't had that opportunity to research. But as soon as you start to engage the sound element, that can create reactions. So let's find out. We sit there and we go passively. Mm, and this is such a valuable exercise on so many levels. Firstly, brass playing is no harder than humming, talking or singing. And I cop shit for it. But at the end of the day, all we've done, as I said before, you're activating the oscillation of the vocal cords. Well, let's turn that off and Use the voice. I'll sit here and passively hum. So, mm, it's a loud low C and there's no body engagement. I'm not falling off my chair, but I'm not actively blowing. I'm passive. I've just moved the oscillation point from so it feels like the workload feels like humming that threatens people right <laughs> sorry don't mean to offend nothing i can do about that at the end of the day the mechanics are the mechanics and if you imagine a very simple system of energize the lungs there's the battery there's the fuel tank energy is flowing and something oscillates something resonates that's how sound works I've got a uh, concept called, uh, 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 didn't get that one ready, the body's concert hall. That's where your sound comes from, flute, trumpet, trombone, whatever. Back in here, we don't think about that. That's where the sound comes from. So we've got to embrace that feeling and sit there over and over and over and over and over, humming. And the amazing thing about humming, and I discovered this uh, doing a recording with the Queensland Symphony. I live in Queensland, Australia now, after living in Melbourne for 25 years. Moved north of Brisbane, and I got called to go into the Queensland Symphony to play lead trumpet for all the music for the Commonwealth Games. Two days of recordings. Big, heavy, live orchestra, pressure gig. And so, you know, the butterflies are starting to swim around, fly, fly around. And in order to not get in there and overblow at the start, I reminded myself, Greg, don't try and be a hero. You've got lots of playing to do. Just be efficient. 
So as I was getting my trumpet out of my case, I started humming just to remind myself that playing's no harder than humming, talking or singing. Yes, of course, we have to get active. If anyone's sitting at home going, Greg, you need to get active with your playing. Of course we do, but I want to start from passing. So I started humming and the anxiety went away. Has anyone heard of the vagus nerve? Right, right. Not surprised. In this. If you haven't and you're experiencing uh, issues, try humming and do some research on what's it, V-A-G-U-S, vagus nerve. Runs through the whole body and it's got to do with serotonin and uh, calmness or, or anxiety. It stops the flow of serotonin and when you hum, the vibrations relax the body and serotonin starts to flow and you feel calm. That's as much as I know about it. And it's probably a hell of a lot more complex. But at the end of the day, there are brain chemicals or chemicals in the body that do things. The whole learning system is based on error detection, error correction, frustration, all these sorts of things. And that's a big one. So what we're doing when we hum, we're setting a portrait. This is what I want to feel like when I'm playing. I've taken a nice breath and I've dropped. Mm, I can close my eyes and I can see myself sitting there with the instrument on my mouth with nothing going on and this beautiful body's concert hall sound coming out the bell. Ah, that's all we're doing. Here comes out here. We never think about the vocal cords when we're talking. Why think about the mouth when we're playing? Funny, isn't it? Because that's the contact point. We spend, put all of our energy and focus on the touch bit here. What's this doing? We've got to get to the point where we don't even think about that. So yes, we do de need to de desensitize. It's a very gradual thing. I see a list of green ticks. Stillness, ping, energize the lungs, ping, hum. Mm. As soon as you start to hum, you feel something trigger in the body. To which I go, wow, awesome, right. What's happening? Where's it happening? What does it feel like? What's going on? For ages, it took so long with Jules and we've got it all on video. I'm like, no, no, there's something going on. It's down in the abdominals. There's something going on in the abdominals. I can see with my trumpet brass students, stuff going on in the body, you know, inefficiencies. Uh, but this is a deeper, deeper thing. But there was something, an energy from down in the core that Jules could not pick. It was so wired in, so deep in the system. But once we exposed it, it was a game changer. Because then you've got, right, stillness feels like this. Then when it activates, Oh, you can pick the difference. Where did it start? It started when I went to take a breath. Oh, right, great. Let's start from there then. At what part of energizing the lungs did it? Was it the thought, the anticipation of taking the breath? Yep, the minute I expanded, something went, ah, 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 ah don't you? To which you send the error message going, no, no, no. Don't forget, every action is followed by a message. It's either a um, correct result message or an error message. Don't do that and do a drill, whatever that drill might be, in order to correct the error. So we've got to the point here, we're still, we've energized the lungs, we drop, we become passive, we don't fall off the chair, we don't, oh, we're not, we don't have an instrument yet. <laughs> you relax the body, let the energy flow, you hum. Mm. Can we do that? I'm interested, Holly. If can I get you to do that and tell me if there's anything going on in the system whatsoever? So an expansion in the nose through the nose, then drop the body and hum. Mm. I don't happen? think I feel. I don't think I feel any activation. Right. No, I'm not seeing anything. So yeah. you've got to leverage that. You've got to close the eyes and go righto. That's the feeling that I want. I'm going to, below the neck here, that's what it feels like to play. You are demanding it. That's what, just do that. Every action is followed by a message. 
Mm, right, just do that. Then connecting, it's called biofeedback apparently, we're connecting a current sensation to the visualization of a future event. So you're humming, you've energized the body and it's doing everything it needs to do. Then you picture in your mind, you holding the flute, you can picture the, the mouth plate being on your mouth, right? And you live it in your mind. Don't look. So when you've got an embouchure dystonia, is that right? When the mouth touches, it's triggering in the mouth. Radio. So from this point right here, we can start to visualize the outcome that we want. And to some people that might sound so out, right? But we make our own reality. I keep showing people the matrix green numbers coming down. The conscious mind is the programmer. The errors of the subconscious mind, they're red numbers if something's going wrong. So we've got to find out where the pressure points are, where the force field begins, right? So let's let's use uh, Holly as our, our um, sort of litmus tests. We're here, we're, we're in stillness. You're looking very cool, calm and collected, Holly. So I feel like stillness is good, right? Um, We've got the energize the lungs. We've got the drop. We've got the eyes. At this moment, there is no sense of trepidation. Can I say that? Yes. Confidently? Right. Yes. This is really good. So we practice that. And we build on that 16 hours of a day, 16, eight, in whatever way you need to reinforce it. So we need to find with everyone where the issue starts. So then the next step, and this is the big one with trumpet players generally, is when I do, I'm calling it the four ways, four ways to convert the energy from the breath into getting the body prepared to convert it to sound. And so it's a hum. Mm -hmm. Then you just simply lower your jaw. That movement there can be very, very, very triggering. And if that one's not, mm, uh, the all coming inwards, mm, uh, can set all kinds of things off, right? And <laughs> Brad, believe it or not, you're in my mind when I actually said that because we remember what happened, right? So this has overcome by calling out the error. No, my look, that's fine. It's doing everything I'm telling it to do, right? But there is wired deep in, either in the visualization of where this is headed or the actual feeling of the activation itself, threatening. So we need to desensitize that threat. So we, at what point in the four ways does it start to trigger? Is it the minute that the lips start to come apart? Mm, right, often in, in mouth dystonias that I've seen, it's mm, and soon as you pull the lips apart, mm, and it'll start there, right? To which I go, right, oh, well, that doesn't have to happen. It's happening. You gotta thank your brain, it's protecting you. It thinks. It thinks it's protecting you from danger. So what? How do we do that? No, 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 no. No, I'm okay. Hey, you going over there, Jim? Everything's right. Relax. Then, here's the learning loop in action right now. So the action is opening the lips. Mm -hmm. Every action followed by a message. Don't do that. That's wrong. That's not it. That's not going to work. And then you could do a drill because you're not humming and go, look, mouth's open, no reaction. So there's our error detection, the action followed by a message, don't do that. Then a drill, just do this. No reaction. Let's try again. 
Mm, uh, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Look at this. No reaction. Just do that. Let's try again. Mm, that's not it. That's not it. Look, look. I'm not shaking, see? Just do that. It's literally a conversation in your mind. And it's got to the point with Jules where I'm saying, say it out loud, Julie. And to get her to actually go, that's not it. And not say it at, at the start. It was all very, lots of thought. And, that's not it. Like, no kid's going to listen to you if you go, oh, Jimmy, don't do that. No, Jimmy keeps doing it. <laughs> right? Don't do that. Ah! We're not doing that anymore. Don't do that. You've got to feel it. It's got to have energy in it. Because what it's doing is building frustration. What's it? Epinephrine and acetylcholine, brain chemicals. Saying there's a problem. Check out Andrew Huberman. I was put onto him because of a thing I did about, I taught myself to play golf left-handed to show the learning process. I'm now club champion in B grade at my local golf course. If you understand the learning process, we can leverage it, right? So someone showed me Andrew Hoogman. It's fascinating stuff. But basically, when we make an error, we get frustrated. When we make the error, we get frustrated. When we make the error, we get frustrated. So we come back again to the next loop here and go, right, come on, that's, don't do what you just did. Do this. Stop reacting. Then all of a sudden, you go, mm, uh, and the mouth opens and it doesn't start shaking. And you go, just do that. And that releases dopamine and the dopamine sends the message to the brain to go do what you just did then right so depending on where you are in your phase of practice and your personality type if you're like me i call it coffee moments when you have a breakthrough moment like that it didn't react it did everything i wanted it to do put the horn down go and have a coffee and immerse myself in the sensation of it because i'll i learn more thinking about it than actually trying to repeat it. And probably what's going to happen if you try and repeat it, there's going to be a negative reaction and you're actually screwing up what should have been a, a breakthrough moment, right? So I go away and think about it, right? And uh, I'll continue in a minute. Brad, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Great to see you. I'm good. Good to see you. So, and Holly, one of the things like mine was really bad. I, I was who Greg was talking about. I thought I had early onset Parkinson's, um, you know, so I, I was actually pretty excited to have dystonia because, you know, uh, one of those is curable. So um, for me, the, I added an in-between step here. So for the first three months that I started, uh, I, sat on my piano bench with no mouthpiece, no anything, just trying to see where, you know, it took me three months to be able to touch my face uh, without my hands shaking. And then another four weeks before I could touch my face with just the mouthpiece. So that next in-between step for me, uh, because I start to shake, you know, in the ooh, which is getting better. Right. Uh, but for, for me, that in-between step was actually putting uh, even in the instrument with no mouthpiece, so probably in the flute equivalent, it would be just the head joint and and literally doing and getting used to that feeling of creating of creating sound. And because the mouthpiece is dangerous, right? And probably in the way that, you, that the head joint feels dangerous when it's connected, yeah. So taking just that stillness and being able to touch the head joint and then, and then literally just doing having a piece of the instrument touching your lips while humming. And then, and then I would start to do my, my other visualizer and sing while moving my keys, you could probably do this with your flute with no head joint and just doing do, 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 
and you know that's like 10 minutes of my day it, and it's better you know i can i can play with my students my son's in fifth grade now and i you know i can play with him out of his accident on achievement book and that's and that's fun am i am i doing uh, am i going to play at disney concert hall in the next year no but i can do you know most of what i could do at one point and and i don't um dread touching the horn anymore you know and what i was saying just in that quick note of the the frustration zone you know going as musicians we're so conditioned uh you know to play until you fail that the difference between playing until we fail versus playing until you get it right um is really has been really key for me and other things will pop up you know like those 16 waking hours um, I would practice a lot in my car on my way to school, you know, doing doing that stuff. So what I noticed about about halfway down the process, after about four months, whenever I would take a breath, I would feel my calves tighten up because the way my feet would sit on the pedals. You know, I'm sitting there on a stoplight oh, doing. That's great. Right? So, we'd, you know, we'd, you'd connect other, uh, other muscles and just kind of being cognizant of those things. Right. And, Absolutely. You know. But yeah, that was really a big, a big part for me. Great. I love that. Well done, man. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I, I, I just need to divert for a minute. Samir, I just saw your message. My dear friend, I've been talking darts, been talking golf swings, and uh, it's all the same thing. So you've got your ring finger, your pinky finger, when you go to play. So we go a step back and go. Can you wiggle your fingers around? Can you can you just no? Hi. Hey, mom. Hey, Jules. Hey, Holly. Hey, Michael. Can you hold the hand still? And have no reaction in the in the fingers? Yeah, if you could, that would be great, Samir. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry. I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, regarding your question, I don't think I can even do that. Um, and so basically, if I try to just open my hand, my ring finger immediately flexes and my pinky immediately extends. Okay, right. So can you hand, because what it's all about here, and this is where, it's error detection and is my body broken? I don't believe your body's broken. Let's find out. Can you hang your hand straight down next to you and let go of, just let it, let it hang, like no engagement. So down next to you. So at the moment, it's completely fine, right? So then yes. if you're, can, you, can you wiggle them around? <clears throat> yes. So they're fully functional. They're fully active here. So it's only when we get to the point of playing. Now I've got a trumpet player friend who, when he does that, it, it, it starts to bend down when he goes to, to think about it. And, it, and it's, it, so what we're doing is we're finding the trigger points. It's the same with brass. It's the same with anything. It's like what's happening and where's it happening? Because at the end of the day, you can straighten your fingers out and you can clench them in. You've got a full range of movement, right? So yes. then we go, right, what, at what point does something start to do something involuntarily, right? And a lot of, so can I get, can I get you to hold your fingers up and really stretch them out for me? Now, is there anything happening to that? Yeah, that, right. There's a lot of things happening here. Yeah. Right. Okay. So can you just give that little finger just a little tickle for me? Really lightly. Because you're saying, hello, I'm here and everything's all right. Now let's do it to the, the next finger. Give it a nice little, all right? Now bend them in for me. Clench the, clench the fist again. All right. Let's slowly, slowly unwrap and stop about there. Any, any, any issue there? No, not there. Okay, close your eyes, store it, put it up on your feature wall. Look at this. What does that feel like having nothing, no energy, no nothing on the radar at that point? 
It's pretty, it's fine. It's pretty normal. Right. So we need to build that forward and start and picture, imagine the point at which things start to start to do it. Right. Like a fishing rod and a fish bites it and pulls the rod down. Yeah. Where does it start? At what point does it start? Because with the, um, the understanding of the fact that you're not broken, then we go, at what point do I start and react? And it's that trigger point. We've got to find that. Remember I was talking about the barking dog to, to Jules. At what point does the threat begin, right? So then eyes closed and slowly start to where does it start right and we're going from both ways we're going to go from in here but we've already discovered very quickly that when you go to full extension yes that, that the issue starts so we're going to start yeah. from that way, right, right. So then when so let's do it and slowly lift the fingers up and the minute that you sense anything i want you to just start just giving it a little pat <laughs> right okay here should i close my eyes for this it's up to you okay ultimately yes but i don't want to bombard mm -hmm. you with threats <laughs> no that's all right <laughs> very super duper 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 slow See already that little finger is starting to misbehave. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can Ring you... finger was going fine, but yeah, pinky starts to stretch. Okay, so you you need to be fully conscious of at because I didn't see you try and reject it when it started going. Dip, 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 right, 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 that's, right. That's, that's the point right there, because the psychology right. here is. I've got full action in my fingers. My body's not broken. I've got full range. I need, we're learning a new habit, right? Because at the moment, the you know, Greg trying to teach himself to play golf left-handed, keep slicing the ball into the trees. It's an error. It's a bad habit or it's a natural habit, whatever the reason is. I don't want to do that anymore. So at what point, how does it slice? What do I need to learn? Oh, I need to get my wrist around. I need to get my wrist around, release the club, release the club. Is that enough? No, it still started to slice. Is that enough? No, it still started to slice. It's a process of elimination, um, you know, trial and error sort of thing. So I need you the minute, because it's the same thing um, with Holly when that the mouth plate comes to the to the lip, it's going to respond, and that may be because of contact or it may be because of the the force fields being breached, um, the shadows turned up. Um, so as you come up, the minute that that starts to grab, I need you, I call it the attention spotlight. It's the spotlight. We all need to do this. Constantly screaming at Jules, what's happening? Where's it happening? What does it feel like? How is it different from stillness? So we've got to look at the feeling of what's happening and go, look, it's not happening now. Look, everything's cool, right? And it's just your right hand? Yes. Only my right hand. Perfect, radio. So you're, um, and look, I'm making this up real quickly, but it's based on the, the process that I use. Sure. But at the end of the day, your, your hands here, your wrist. See, one, if I was spending more time with you, I'd be looking at the wrist and going right up the arm and shoulders and making sure everything's loosey-goosey, mind's happy, everything's cool. Let's, for today's sake, say that everything's fine. The wrist yeah. is good. Right, and then we just start wiggling and then we start to straighten. You need to, at the minute you sense anything grab, start to tickle it and send the message, that's not it, and come back and go, look, you're not doing it now. Then start to lift up more. And then it starts and you go, no, 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 we're not doing that. No, that's an error. Just do this, look. Body's not broken. I've got full extension. Look, it's a literally conscious reprogramming. 
It's creating True. a new habit. Great. All right. All right. So the essence of all of this is error detection, error correction, based on our understanding of the mechanics of how, in your case, how the body works. All right. So, Thank you. Uh, Jules, what's uh, Hiroki? Is it the piano player? Who, 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 the Japanese piano player with dystonia? What's her name? Uh, the Mindful Pianist is the, her website. What, what's her oh, name? I worked with her. Oh, did you? Yeah, I can't remember her name though. I'll find it. Recovery is possible. Akiko Trush. Akiko. That's yes. 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 So the way, if I recall, is is hers was the touch of the keys right so that's the trigger point and that's all we're looking for are trigger points yeah. okay. so just you will get to the point where you can get all the way up and there'll be no reaction and then you'll be able to stretch out you've got oh i've got full look at that right right and then you'll start and come back down and then the finger will take off no 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 we don't need to do that look then when it starts to go, send your spotlight to it. What does it feel like? And, and go, everything's okay. Just give it a pat, right? And eventually it will start to unlock. It might take a minute. It might take a year. I don't know. But it's just Great. that awareness of what's happening, right? Really ram intensive, right brain, heavy focus and attention. And... Stay in touch. Let me know how it's going. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good on you, Samia. So, right. I'm I'm conscious of this not going for four hours because I could easily sit here and it's like, where do we stop? Right. So, but because we we we've spoken about the force field. And eventually, and we do it walking around, we do it 16 hours a day, then we've got contact. And that's where everything can fall apart. And even with Jules and I, Jules will agree, although we've been doing some wicked stuff recently, we just put the horn on, doesn't matter where it sits on your face, you hold it there and recognize any uh, pulses going through the body. It's all about the awareness of the reaction within the body that is removed from stillness. It's the point of difference from stillness to the reaction, and it can feel like an electric pulse going through the body, right? So we need to detect that. Where is it happening? What does it feel like? What don't I want? Then we can start to do the learning loop and call out the error and just keep repeating until you get the, the result that you want. So Holly, if you were to use your finger and go, well, let's just find out, can I get you to do the mm -hmm. So the four steps are the hum, the lowering of the jaw, the inward movement of the aperture corners, turning the mm -hmm. voice off. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just that. Mm -hmm. So does that create any any drama? No, I would say I would say actually that I've I've done some of the stuff. I would say I'm at maybe an eighty percent retrained where I'm at now, but there's it's still trying to get rid of this pulling up that happens occasionally when I'm inhaling. When I do it very slowly, I'm usually pretty successful with it. Okay. So right. I perhaps need to do it more. <laughs> well, you need to, yep, slowly, mindfully, 
and people don't like doing it slowly because slowly might cause a reaction. Good. That's what we want. And this is the most counterpart that I've experienced with people with dystonia is they don't want to trigger a reaction. Why would you want to do that? Well, it's obvious to expose it so we can fix it, not try and adapt to it. We don't want to be adaptive. We don't want to try and live with it because it's going to come back. It's going to move somewhere else in the body and ultimately it's going to bite you. Maybe it won't, but there seems to be quite a bit of uh, research around to say that it will. Right. So can I now get you to, and I'd, 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 <laughs> I'd, I'd love to do a blooming resonance session and stuff with you. Can I get you to, no, uh, I want to see black. Ooh. Keep the chin down, corners in. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so when you're turning the voice off, you're going, oof, oof. Can I get you to go, oof? Oof. Almost. Oof. See, it's these involuntary actions that are really important because uh, it can be stemming from somewhere else and creating other problems in the playing system somewhere else. We can't go into that now. But at the moment, there's still a mouth movement when you turn the voice off. Can you do that for me? <laughs> right. So now it's now it's not moving. And if you turn the voice off, it's like a cold breeze blowing through a cold jungle. Yeah, see so instantly my my brain goes down the there's some wires going further back possibly we, we can't go into it now i'm just there's there's i can sense what you would do when you go to play and i i my instinct says that you're going to be engaging things beyond what's required and there's going to be a movement in the mouth that mm -hmm. is involuntary that doesn't need to be there right i'll just leave that with you to have a think about right yeah oh because what i'd like to get to is this the force field can we pen it is there a force field number one and make contact with your finger it might not be a thing at all or it could be very triggering let's find out okay. So I'm not yes. seeing any, did it, okay. I didn't see any tremor, but did, what, what, was there no. a reaction? No, I will do that actually quite a bit where I might do, have my inhale and I'll be blowing and then just bring the head joint up and it's pretty good. Right. So that's, so, it's a process that we use quite often with Jules as well. She'll breathe, drop, hold because the energy's there and the mouth's already engaged that can be de-triggering then put the mouthpiece on open the lips up and the systems all systems go but if you put the mouthpiece on then take the breath it, it that's triggers, right correct yeah right. that's what it happens with me yeah 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 so there are strategies here now I'm, I'm 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 like a dog with a bone with this stuff can i please get you to do this i want to see black ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, chin down, chin down, chin down a bit more. And I know it's not necessarily a flute playing embouchure. That's not the point. This is a pedal tone on a trumpet. Because what we do is embrace the concept of strangeness. Something feels different. And the brain will go, that can't be right. That's different. That's not going to work. But then when we think about the mechanics behind it, go, well, what? Oh, well, what are we doing here? We're moving energy and we're putting it across a Helmholtz resonator <laughs> and letting it just do its thing. Right? At the moment, I'm struggling to get you to just do that. Everything's wanting to go and tighten, to which mm -hmm. I, just raises the alarm bells. That's all I'm saying, right? I'd love to see you do that. 
Should yes, I get my hair joint? <laughs> well, I mean, if if yes is the answer, but I, until okay. I can see this, can I? Because I'm not seeing black. Yeah, so I'm I'm seeing this. Chin down, corners in. It's like a pucker. All right. Yeah, see, I, I, yeah, there's, I believe there's more going on. I can't say that for fact. We've just met, right? Can I, can I get you to do this? Oh, you just got a big surprise. Oh, ooh, hold it there. Ooh, ooh. It's still closing. It's okay. Every time you go to blow, they close top, up. Yep. Okay. That, that cannot not be having some degree of impact somewhere in the playing system. I'll just give that to you as data. I don't know that for fact. I haven't had any time to research with you. My instinct says that there are involuntary things going on here. And then as soon as you flip into that 1.0 brain of, right, let's play now. We're right brain. We're playing the way that we know how. We're not focused on mechanics at all. There is no way that that's not going to come into it, right? So mm -hmm. part of breaking the mold is to embrace strangeness and go, that feels really weird, but let's do it for the purpose of the exercise. Because my, my, my suspicion is if you can't do it with your finger and keep the mouth down there, there's no hope on heck that you're going to be able to do it with the mouth. Right. <laughs> and that's going to trigger other things that are involuntary movements. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. I'll I'm leave trying. that with you to have a, have a look at. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I've just got something here, a direct message, so I won't read it out. As I'm beginning, it's waited about 40 minutes, went to go, ah, focal hand Estonia, three and a half years. We'd love to chat about it. Definitely, 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 definitely. Let's do it. Um, so I've been doing hand therapy for this, including uh, Botox. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm doing very well, thank you. Let's talk. Um, yes, indeed. So I want to wrap it up because we could we could just go so far down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, are there any questions? There are people in the background there. They don't need to turn their cameras on if they don't want to. Feel free to turn your microphone on and ask a question or put a question through in the chat. I think hopefully I've seen all the chats, which for me is really big because I just I don't have enough RAM to read the chats when I do these presentations. Um, yeah, Jules, is there anything that you would like to say, add, um, to value add? Well, yeah, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, these are things you've mentioned, Greg, but just things that have helped me, um, with visualization, it, it sounds so trite, but having a, a visualization of what of how you want to see yourself what you want putting all the the five senses into that or at least four is important because the brain doesn't know the difference so the more information you can put into that visualization the more likely it will be stored and this is not something that happens overnight you have to persist with this and persist with it and persist with it. And I used to get so much negative messaging back in my head about, oh, you'll never get better. Or, you know, you can't do this. And just, um, I would replace, you know, one negative thought with two positive ones. I'm making progress and, you know, I'm getting better every day and just stomping it down because it's a, it is, is a habit that I got myself into the negative thinking, which is part of the whole tangle of my dystonia. Uh, or the dystonia. I don't want to say it's mine anymore. It's not. Um, so that's that's one thing that I have found really important. 
And then Greg's talked about even with breathing. So breathing for me was a massive trigger. I didn't even have to be touching my face or anything. It literally taking a breath the proper way rather than a reversed kind of breathing was was one of the early steps for me. And it's just really important to find your baseline. So for example, sitting in stillness, if sitting, if if doing that in your practice room is causing some unease, then relocate to another part of your house where you're comfortable and start there. So you want to find a baseline that works for you. And then that baseline will move over time. But you're you're looking to get to, you know, what is that um that initial starting point where I can have the stillness I'm looking for. And that concept refines over time as do all of these, but just getting to that initial spot. And along with that is just really paying attention to what's going on in your body. So for me, um, uh, there was a certain amount of denial, um, even working with Greg initially, um, there was some denial about what was going on. Um, and I would try to, you know, control or compensate. Oh, I don't want my body to do that. And then over time, just gradually getting um, more clear about well, what's really going on. Because that once you start to get to be able to really see and really get the full picture, oh, it isn't just my shoulder, oh, I'm shaking in my belly. Once you can start doing that, then it gives you information on how you're going to move forward. So it's just really important to pay attention to what's uh, what's going on in your body physically, pay attention to everything. And over time, I've seen a lot of things drop off so I don't have to pay attention to so much, but I just wanted to mention that. And then the, um, the, the repetition, off of your instrument, I have found to be incredibly important. So even if it's just a picture of, you know, or I walk around my house with my hands up, because this used to be a trigger, like I couldn't have my hands up here without a trigger. So for me, it's hands, it was breathing. I mean, I, I got them all. So um, it, lucky me. <laughs> so if, if the hands, you know, walking around the house for you know, maybe it's two minutes and I take a breath and drop and I just tell myself, that's what playing feels like. And then, you know, go about my business. Or if I, I do a lot of writing and editing, taking a quick breath, a break and doing some humming and, and taking a, you know, a deep breath. Because even then, for me, taking a breath was, and I couldn't drop. So it's just paying attention to these fine, fine details. And they will become more obvious. It was really hard for me to get a handle on it. And then just being really diligent with the um, repetition whenever you have a moment um, or even, you know, I would bring things up to my face and, and put my hand down and say, you know, that's what that's what playing feels like. But I couldn't even do that. I couldn't bring anything up to my face for well over a year without just mass chaos. So um, I've just found all these things to be um, just super helpful, just really paying attention, finding your baseline and then doing the repetition whenever you have a few minutes, even if it's just taking a quick drop breath and dropping and reminding yourself, hey, that's what playing feels like because all of that gets stored in the brain and it takes time and I don't know what the time is. It takes time, but eventually those messages started coming back to me when I would pick up my instrument. Oh yeah, remember that breathing and dropped body feel? Well, that's what playing feels like. Yeah, so awesome. that's all I, I, I used to hammer Jules about, did you visualize it? How many, I'd, if I had a dollar for every time I've said, if you can't visualize it, you can't do it, I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you've got aphantasia or a degree of ADHD where some people cannot visualize, you can picture the, you can make the result that you want. You've got to visualize it no matter what, um, it is that you're working on uh brad here you go mate and wellsy good to see you my friend thank you for coming um here's the cycle of teas so the essence of this is and it doesn't matter hey grania um it doesn't matter what instrument you're on there are triggers and there are steps that we need to take so we've got stillness then we're energizing the lungs dropping creating natural passive energy then humming, 
the four ways is that Ma, I really want Holly to you to get. I want to see black. The five ways is the poo lip coo came T and two. That's the five articulations. Then tissue V for visualizer. After all these years of calling it V for victory, and it's always bothered me because it was Winston Churchill war stuff. Why did I not think V for visualizer? Because visualizer starts with a V. Pretty dumb. But anyway, we got there eventually, Greg. Well done. Then mouthpiece, then lead pipe, then the instrument. So it's so nice to have a, um, I've been talking about the cycle of tees. And yes, it's on purpose. Tees, golf tees, technical everyday elements, because it's the same thing. And whilst this might upset people, my, my intention isn't to upset. We're just looking at something that's going on. And, and Grania, I'd love to talk to you about it for sure. The body's developed a habit. For whatever reason, it started doing something we don't want it to do. And there are many times when Jules would go, yeah, Greg, but when you've got the stony up, and I'd go, yeah, Greg, uh, Julian, when I slice a golf ball, and it's on, <laughs> right? I know it sounds flippant. It's not. It's an understanding that the body's doing something we don't want it to do, and we need to train it to do something we want it to do, right? So, uh, I don't even know what my point was there. My brain's just about fried. But uh, oh, the visualization and the portrait, what are we trying to achieve? Um, yeah. Grania is a wonderful friend from Melbourne. Been around for many years. And uh, how are you? I'm sorry to hear that you're having these issues. Well, I had about three and a half years ago, I did. Um... I did a, it's, it's a long story, but you know, we haven't got time, but um, yeah, I've got focal hand dystonia on these two fingers. Yep. Clarinet player, so chromatic scale is a bit difficult now. Um, I'm teaching full time though, so I'm doing a lot of, you know, I, I can sort of play, but um, not not as much professionally as I was. Yep. Um, but I st I've had hand therapy with Karen Fit in Melbourne for about three and a half years. Okay. It's Melbourne hand therapy. So I've done, I was doing two to three hours a day of hand exercises. And then um, I did Botox, I had Botox for a couple of about six months. That was actually quite good to relax the hand, okay. but it sort of fades out and then comes back again, sort of thing. So um, she didn't want me to do it as much. She was, would have preferred the, um, so I did that. And also I had a session with the guy from Glasgow, um, uh, Burke, P, uh, no, I'll put it here. Um, the name was, his name was Patrice Burke. Uh, things like I had, um, I've used a lot of this sort of stuff, a lot of, lot of, um, okay. You know, so yeah, so as a clarinet player, it's my left hand. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I do this and I do these exercises daily. I'm having six months off at the moment because my my head just couldn't deal with it. After a while, I just sort of got to the point when three and a half years worth of it. But it's sort of also I think I've had it for a long time. I didn't know. Right. Um, it's from, basically from trauma. I think I've broken dislocated this when I was in year seven. Okay. I've got very skinny fingers on the clarinet that go through the holes. Ah. You know, so um, I had a really weird position. I remember changing this when I was in Germany uh, when I was studying my right hand because it was sort of like that yeah. and and weight. So I, I changed that myself with the left hand um, because you've got to hold the thumb, the thumb, you've got a thumb thing to press the register key. Um, what happened was uh, the hand was in that position. So all the compensatory things gone now because I've done those exercises. But still, if you look at, um, I'll give you my right hand because that's, so that's really good now, this one. So if you look at that, it, it just curls. Uh, it just, yeah. Uh, so, uh. Yeah, so these exercises worked up to a point and then um, it, it just kept going back. So I I sort of needed a break mentally and um, then I saw your thing on the line and I thought, yeah. But I remember when it sort of happened, it happened over a couple of years when it got worse. I was doing a gig with um, Orchestra Victoria, Michael Ninen piece, yep. a lot of bass clarinet and a lot of, when I looked up what focal hand dystonia was, it, 
I tick just about all the boxes. I'm a doubler. I learn something really fast. Perfectionist. Just wanted it. I practice a lot. Just every, every the list of things was was I just ticked every single box. Really so I had to learn this piece. Uh, someone pulled out at the last minute. I had to learn this thing. Most of my stuff sight reading. So a whole operas or ballets or whatever. Yeah. Um, and this bass clarinet uh, part had uh, I think um, about two or three pages of repetitive stuff, and and it was sort of solo. So you sort of had to have it really. Now, it wasn't solo, but it was very important. And then I remember changing to my clarinet, having to play it, and nothing happened. I couldn't, I couldn't actually do something straight away. And that's, that clicked yeah. into yeah. Uh, that. That was a couple of years before I went to a hand specialist and she said, um, oh, you just got to rest. So I rested and it sort of was got a little bit better. And then, and then it came to the fore when I did my master's of uh, performance on bass clarinet. And I thought I was mentally playing the best I've ever played. And, choosing amazing repertoire with multiphonics, all these amazing things. And then I gradually had to change my repertoire to suit my hand. My last recital, I had all my fingers strapped up to, to I don't even know how I got through it, but yeah, that's a very quick story of my life. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that, Grania. Yeah, so sorry. yeah, so it's about yeah. three and a half years and I've been very diligent. I was like, um, Julie was talking about, you know, just, you know, all those things about um, just not being, not being, giving up on it, but I've sort of got to the point where three and a half years of, you know, two and a half, three hours a day of exercises and trying things out, doing everything, I, I sort of needed to give myself a break um, from it. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to talk. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry I didn't mean to, to, to take over or anything. <laughs> no, 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 this is yeah. why we're here. God, yeah, this is... I haven't spoken to many, many people about it. You know, no, like, I understand. Yeah. Well, I, I get that. Um, yeah. you know, the whole emotional side of it. Jules just had to shut down from bands for a while and just dissociate from, from people. And it's, it's, it's yeah. traumatic. We get that. Yeah. So, um, we're just trying to bloom and shine the light on the fact that, that we can get through it. Um, and you've got support around you. It's for you saying that is helpful for other people that are here, you know, so thank you not apologize at all <laughs> um yeah i mean because everything that you're saying is very um the the message you're giving me is very physical physical strain physical this physical that which obviously it is a physical thing but that doesn't necessarily equate to having to develop dystonia so there are other things on and and as jules and i would both quite we can't do it in public because we can't be judging or saying anything bad about other methods but botox and, and and us don't particularly roll because it might be uh the headache tablet after the drinking the night before <laughs> well i did it i did it for about on and off for about i mean i did it for a six month session and i found it actually as i said um my hand therapist didn't want me to do it but i thought i'd try it yep, yep. Um, and I found it. I found it actually relaxed the hand, and I was able to do the actual exercises um, with a different sort of way of thinking, or or just my hand felt a little bit freer to actually approach it and actually feel like I was doing something. And he wanted me to continue. He was a very good, like he was a very good neurologist. Um, but I sort of thought you've got to go one thing, otherwise you don't get the whole package of what someone is trying to actually. Um, I don't know, to pursue to, to, you know, the three and a half years I did was quite a lot. So it was 2018. It's probably more now. It's four years, isn't it? It's probably four. Yeah. Right. Anyway, yeah. that was an interesting sort of, I didn't think Botox was bad. I just I just think it's it's another way of looking at actually um, seeing what happens when you do it. And, you know, sometimes well, you just try these things. I understand. Totally understand. And no judgment here. Just the uh, underlying cause of it may not be physical. That's all. And yeah. so mm. Botox may not be the best idea for trying to fix a problem that isn't a physical problem. Yeah. Uh, that's all. That's all. And we have seen some horror stories of brass players that have had Botox in mouths and it doesn't end well. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. when we're working on, you said the word perfectionism. No one else here did. <laughs> you did, oh, right? Wow. So there is there is an emotional thing going on here. There is a oh, yeah. professional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then when we, we understand that, and then and then we just go down the process like did you see um when I was talking to the, the piano player there? 
It's just actually finding the trigger points and going at what point can your can your hand sit in stillness? Can you? It's your left hand. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So when when you do that, is that instantly grabbing now? Is there anything? No, grabbing? no. So it's it's cool. Can you wiggle your fingers around nice and loose? There you go. There you go. Yeah, you've done a good job on that left knuck, the knuckle on your little finger, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, I think it was just when when I broke and dislocated that, and I remember the same thing when it happened, and I was devastated. But I remember I was just standing in a casualty section, and they just went and wrapped it up, and that was it. Oh, oh, oh. oh that was, all right. I'm very old, so it was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, <God>. Easy. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and I think you, that's what you said. It was from the, that trauma, that, and and then I, how I held the clarinet, and I've got skinny fingers. So. Yeah, I'm just seeing when you pick it up, though, it, you are quite active. Like even that, that's not that's not passive. That looks to me like you're engaged. There, right? Okay, so that's where we work from. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let go. Let let go completely. Don't try and do anything. Then when you start to straighten where yes even there it just it just wants to go into that real early on so once we start to at what point when you start to straighten does it start to play funny so it's basically if i think about the clarinet thing here yeah yeah see even there though it's already it's already gone it's, it's gone yeah 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 we're gonna go right back way back but i did like these exercises like like um bronwyn ackerman i don't know whether you've heard of her bronwyn ackerman and uh was uh what's her name karen fit is head of melbourne hand therapy and she works a lot with uh bronwyn ackerman and um and eckhart ultimate muller so, and i followed all their exercises that they put together and i was a phd in it so there's like a you look at all these there's all these like huge amounts of exercises and stuff that they that i've done I've, 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 I've yeah like daily like hours so yeah but i mean it's it like i like you say i think it's a mental thing as well a lot oh, yeah. a lot with a huge amount i think <laughs> yep 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 yes 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 and i i just from a quick peek at it, it's it's grabbing quicker than you're realizing i reckon yeah, let's let's get together and have a chat. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, sorry to take so much time. No, no, no. It's it's great. It's great to see you. And look, there are so many uh, play. You you probably know of more players from the Melbourne scene or whoever that have just all of a yeah. sudden disappeared because they got the yips or they got this or that. And it's yep. just I you didn't you weren't at the start. I don't think. But I just I was going around the states doing my teaching thing, and I'm just being bombarded with people that have had this dystonia thing. And what the hell is this? You know. And um, and here we are today. It's it's it's, it's bizarre, but um, uh, it, it's awesome. As I said to Jules, this is I get more dopamine and more contentment and excitement doing this than getting on stage playing. You know, yeah. my playing days are. I've got to go to New Zealand and do West Side Story movie soundtrack next month. And it's like I said yes because they asked me. But it's going to be challenging and like why did i say yes <laughs> i do i do enjoy playing now and then so uh this is crazy it's crazy good crazy good and thank everyone thank you everyone for coming please spread the word we'll do more i don't know when the next one will be but we'll get onto it pretty quick jules um congratulations to julie we've been working tirelessly and literally at least six hours every week, it's all on video. We will cut it down one day. Um, we're in the game of helping people recover. And so please um, spread the word. And we'll post and we'll do another one and hook into the, some more stillness and go a bit further. <laughs> um, Holly, great to meet you. Great to chat. Brad, Wellesley, Grania, let's, um, let's talk. And uh, we'll talk very soon. Happy days, everyone. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you.